No competition, Catherine. That's important. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> Good morning, Annenberg graduates, and congratulations to all of you. Awesome, awesome. You have graduated from one of the most prestigious universities in the world. You are congratulated, that's right, one of the most prestigious communication schools in the world. You are incredibly lucky, and you are incredibly blessed. Blessed at this moment to be stepping out into this world with your degrees in PR, communication, and journalism. Right at the moment when it seems like the entire world is all about communication. We are communicating like never before, across borders and time zones, on platforms, devices, computers, tablets, apps, games, you name it, we're communicating 24-7, wired and wirelessly, talking, texting, friending, tweeting, to the other side of the room and the other side of the planet, spitting out the old in order to consume the new. Every minute of every day, you are reaching out beyond yourself. It feels like the entire universe is an extension of our own nervous system. Each of you communicate instantly, automatically, and effortlessly. For you, communicating is like breathing. And today, you're raring to go. Raring to get out into the real world to get a job and transform the world of communications yet again. It's a race to be first, to be next, to be new. It's kind of exciting, and it's also probably a little scary. I get it. It just seems like yesterday I was sitting where you are, Georgetown University, sitting next to my boyfriend who had champagne and some other illegal drugs under his... Uh... I'm sure nobody here is doing any of that in California. Uh, he was all excited. In fact, everybody in my row was drinking. Um, but I, I'm sure that's not going on here either. Um, but I, I, I was scared. I was anxious because I'd applied for a job in television news, but I hadn't heard back. And I remember everybody, and I mean everybody, was asking me, do you have a job? Do you have a job? What are you going to do after graduation? You don't have a job? Oh my God, what are you going to do? I felt so bad about myself. I was so nervous because I didn't have the answer. Like you, I graduated in May, and for months, that question kept coming back to me. What are you going to do? Oh my God, it's the summer. You still don't have a job? Oh my God. I was nervous until I got the job in October. Well, back then, I didn't realize that that what are you going to do question dogs you all your life, your whole life. When you get that assignment desk job, everybody says to you, when are you going on the air? When you get on the air, it's when you're going to go to the network. After you meet that special someone, it's when are you going to get married? When you get married, when are you going to have a kid? When are you going to have the next kid? You have two girls, when are you going to have a boy? When are you going to move? What's wrong with you? Why don't you have a boy? How don't you have four kids? Why don't you have five kids? How much are you making? When I, I remember when I wrote my first book and I was at the book sign and people came up to me and said, when's the next book coming out? Yeah. Right in the middle of the women's conference, somebody incredible would be speaking, and someone come up to me and say, who's next year? Who's coming next year? I was like, they're speaking now, but next year, who's coming? Who's coming? Even today, at my age, people come up to me all the time. What are you doing? What are you doing? What's your job? You going back to TV? You're going to do another women's conference? What are you doing? It's as if what we're doing right now, at this precise moment, doesn't even exist. The only thing everybody seems to be focused on is on the next thing. What are we going to be doing next? Well, I got caught up in that for a really long time. A really long time. So much so that I never could really enjoy what I was doing because I was always so obsessed about what I was going to be doing. I tell you this right now because I know everybody's asking you these exact same questions. What are you going to do after graduation? Where will you be working? How much are they going to pay you? Where will you be living? Where are you going? Oh my God. There are so many questions. And here you are, ready to hit the fast forward button and go out and try to get all the answers to these questions. I get it. 
But today, I have one small wish for you. Before you go out and press that fast forward button, I'm hoping, I'm praying that you'll first have the courage to press the pause button. That's right, the pause button. I hope if you learn anything from me today, if you remember anything that I say today, I hope you'll remember about the power of the pause. Pausing today and throughout your entire life allows you to take a breath. It allows you to take a beat. It allows you to be in the moment. As everybody else is running around out there like a lunatic, I dare you to try to do the opposite. I'm asking you to do this because I believe that you have an incredible opportunity in front of you at this moment, you graduates of the Annenberg School. I'm asking you to learn how to pause because I really believe that the state of our communication is out of control. And you, I believe you have the opportunity to change it. I believe you have the power, each and every one of you, to change the way we as a nation speak to one another, the way we write, the way we use our words. I truly believe that you can change our national discourse for the better. You have the chance to change the way we talk to one another. What we read in newspapers and on the web and magazines, you can help us change the channel. I'm hoping each and every one of you dare to bring change to our community by changing the way we communicate. Change it from criticism and fault finding to understanding and compassion. Change it from naysaying and name calling to acceptance and appreciation. Change it from dissembling and dishonesty to openness and explanation. Change it from screaming to speaking. Show us the way, Annenberg graduates. Show us and take us out to what I have been calling the open field. Go beyond what is to what can only be imagined. I know you can do this because a communications degree means nothing today unless you take it beyond where we are today, into the unknown. And in order to do that, you're going to have to learn how to listen and how to pause. You know I know a little bit about the communication business. I've done it in, through television news, my books, websites, magazines, speeches, blogs, conferences. And if you thought I was going to come here today and explain to you how I did that, the answer is really very simple. I worked my ass off. You too will have to do the same thing. You'll probably have to move a lot, and you will get lucky. But you will need to pause along the way and take a break from communicating outwardly so you can learn to communicate inwardly with yourself. Pause and take the time out to find out what is important to you. Find out what you love, what's real and true to you. So that that, that's that thing there that's important to you can infuse and inform your work and make it your own. Pause before you report something that you don't know is absolutely true and that you haven't corroborated with not just one, but two reliable sources. Make sure they are reliable sources. Pause before you put a rumor out there as fact. Just because you saw it on the web, just because you saw it on a television show, just because you read it in the newspaper, it doesn't mean it's true. It's up to you to decide if you want to pass on garbage or whether you want to check the facts. Pause before you hit. Thank you. Pause before you hit that send button and forward a picture that could ruin somebody's life or write something nasty on somebody's wall because you think it's funny. Believe me, it isn't. Pause before you make judgments about people's personal and professional decisions. Pause before you join in and disparage someone's sexuality or their intellectual ability. Pause before forwarding the untrue and inflammatory tidbits that have made it so difficult for would-be public servants to serve and for their families to exist in the public arena. As you heard, um, as 
As you heard this, somebody uh, this morning quoted Edmund Hillary, and I'll do it again because I think it's such a powerful quote. He said, it is not the mountain that we end up having to conquer, it is ourselves. So sometimes you will have to pause along the way and you'll come to realize that you need to hold yourself back from acting out on your first impulse or your ego. Remember this always, as I said in the beginning, you have a degree from a very prestigious university. Communication has so much power, more power today than ever before to do good. Look at Kony 2012, look at what happened in Egypt and Libya. In almost an instant, communicators toppled dictators and governments that were in place for decades. That is power, and with power comes responsibility. So remember to, re to pause and reflect before you sign on with someone or some organization whose work you do not admire and you don't respect and that you cannot stand up for. Who you work for is as important as what you do. And if you don't have a job yet and someone asks you, what are you doing, where's your job, pause and be aware of this fundamental truth. It's okay not to know what you're going to do. It's okay not to know the answer. You don't have to be like I was at your age and beat yourself up for not knowing. It's okay to go with the truth and tell people, you know what, it's a tough job market out there and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I'm pausing, I'm open, and I'm looking at all my options. That's what I'm saying these days and so far so good. And, uh, While you're looking for that perfect job, know this, there are so many incredible nonprofits out there doing important, profound, and life-altering work. They can use your brains, your intellect, to help them define their message and communicate what they're trying to do in the world. You know, I didn't invent this kind of stop and pause thing. Jesus fasted 40 days and nights. Henry David Thoreau went to Walden Pond. Anne Morrow Lindbergh, one of my heroes, went to the sea. Buddha, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, the greatest and wisest that have ever walked this planet have often stopped and withdrawn from the journey, the outward journey, to spend time within themselves. The wisdom they garnered there and that they turned and shared with the world has impacted us all for the better. So don't worry, I'm not asking you for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm only asking you to stop every so often, turn off your mobile device, put down angry birds and words with friends. Patrick. And, uh, you know, when I asked my own kids to do that at the dinner table, you'd think I was asking for the moon. I am in the middle of a game and I am playing, I'm about to get beaten. I'm like, turn it off. But I ask you to do this because it will allow you to take a moment. It will allow you to stop, to look up, to look around, and to check in with yourself and spend a moment. I hope when you do that, you will feel your strength and your vulnerability. I hope it will allow you to acknowledge your goodness and not to be afraid of it. I hope it will give you an opportunity to look at your darkness and I hope you will work to understand it. So you will have the power to choose which one of those you want to put out into this world. Women, I hope you will look at your toughness and your softness. You can and should make room for both in this world. This world needs both of those qualities. Men, I hope you find your gentleness and I hope you wrap it into your manliness you too can make room for both. The greatest men do. Today, I pray that you'll be able to pause and spend time and give thanks to all who made this journey for you possible. I hope you will express gratitude to everyone who helped get you here. I hope you will be grateful for all the love you have in your life and all the love that you have ever had in your life. And while you're pausing, I hope you will do something refreshingly different, like talk to your mother, your father, or someone you care deeply about. Not text them, 
but actually talk to them with your mouth. And dare I suggest that you actually pause and write an actual thank you note with a pen and a paper. Believe it or not, there are many people still like me who never hire anybody who didn't write them an actual thank you note for an interview. As for me, the truth is that today I stand here as a deeply grateful woman, grateful for the life that I have lived and the life that has brought me here, grateful for all the experiences that I have had that have made me the communicator that I am today. I am pausing to be in awe of this moment that I am standing at my first child's graduation from college. <laughs> I don't know where she, Catherine's probably mortified. <laughs> Wherever you are, Catherine, I'm in awe of you. Where are you? <laughs> I'm in awe of the woman you are, your grace, your courage, your strength. I really am in awe of you, and I'm so proud of you. And I'm in awe of all of you, what you have done for this moment to get here. I hope each and every one of you, I hope you're in awe of yourselves. And I know I speak for everybody in your village, your parents, and all those who love you. We are all in awe of you at this moment. This world, this big, whole wide world out there, this world needs you, you brave men and women who have graduated from this incredible school. I know you can change the course for the better. Sometimes you will need to change course in your life, and I pray that you have the courage to do that. So today, as you head out into the open field of life, I pray that you keep your mind open. And more important, I hope you keep your heart open. Don't be afraid of being afraid. Courageous people are often very afraid. In fact, that's why they need courage in the first place. I hope you will have the courage to go beyond your fears. I hope you will have the courage to go beyond other people's judgments. I hope you will have the courage to go beyond coulda, woulda, shoulda. I hope you will have the courage to go beyond other people's rules and expectations. I pray that you will live and write your own story and then be brave enough to communicate it authentically to others. People will be inspired by it, people will learn from it, and people will have the courage to change their own lives because of the example that each of you can set. So be, be uh, devoted, I would really say, to communicating fairness and communicate the truth in everything you do. Do not get caught up along the way in what you're doing and where you're going that you lose sight of your core values, who you are and what is important in your life. And finally, wherever you go in life, however fast you're going, remember this. Whenever you are in doubt, pause, take a moment, Look at all of your options. Check your intention. Have a conversation with your heart. And then, always take the high road. So fight to make a difference in this world. Fight for good. Fight for fairness. Fight on. Good luck.